Hello and welcome to the Chicago Kent Labor and Employment Law Program webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions, and I'll be the moderator for today's program. We're joined today by a panel of Chicago Kent faculty and students who tell you more about the program and the wide array of opportunities available to our students. After that, we'll open the floor for your questions. Our panelists today are Professor Martin Mallon, Professor of Law and Co-Director of the Institute for Law in the Workplace. Professor Mallon is co-director of the Institute for Law in the Workplace and has taught courses in labor law, employment discrimination, public sector employees, ADR in the workplace, and contracts. He's a former national chair of the Labor Relations and Employment Law Section of the Association of American Law Schools, a former secretary of the ABA Section on Labor and Employment Law, a former member of the Executive Committee of the Labor Law Group, and a former member of the Board of Governors and Vice President of the National Academy of Arbitrators, and a former member of the Board of Governors of the College of Labor and Employment Lawyers. From 2009 to uh, 2017, he served by appointment of President Obama as a member of the Federal Services Impasses Panel, which resolves impasses and collective bargaining between federal agencies and unions that represent their employees. Professor Mallon has written extensively on all aspects of labor and employment law, and has published more than 80 articles and seven books. In 2016, the ABA presented him with the Arvid Anderson Award for Lifetime Contributions to Public Sector Labor Law. Professor Cesar Rosado Marzan, Professor of Law and Co-Director of the Institute for Law in the Workplace. Professor Rosado has taught contracts, employment relationships, international and comparative labor and employment law, and labor law at Chicago Kent. He strives to teach his courses in a way that helps students appreciate the importance of reason, principle, and empirical fact to provide coherent, purposeful, and effective meaning to the law. His research interests lie at the intersection of qualitative empirical research and workers' rights. His recent book, Principled Labor Law, U.S. Labor Law Through a Latin American Method, published by Oxford in 2019, won the 2019 Simone Bolivar Best Book of the Year Award from the Bar Association of Puerto Rico. Marsha Ross Jackson, Assistant Dean for Student Professional Development, Executive Director of the Institute for Law in the Workplace, and Senior Lecturer. Marsha Ross Jackson is an experienced leader, attorney, educator, and consultant. Her expertise in managing operations, finance, communications, employee and labor relations, investigations, compliance, human resources, and law in diverse, large, multi-state offices has helped her to become well-versed in cross-cultural communication and leadership, as well as extremely effective in directing across interdisciplinary settings. Marsha has served as an HR and legal business partner and advisor to senior leaders, boards of directors, and operational leaders. She has also represented multi-billion dollar clients in insurance, employment, and commercial litigation matters. Martian is, is an arbitrator, a member of the American Arbitration Association's roster of neutrals employment law panel. She's also a member of the joint arbitration mediation panel for the Chicago Public Schools and the Chicago Teachers Union. Amy Cortez. Amy graduated from the University of Illinois with degrees in political science and psychology. At Chicago Kent, she was a student editor of the Employee Rights and Employment Policy Journal, a member of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Team, and on the Executive Board of the Society of Women in Law. In 2018, she was one of 17 students statewide who participated in the Association of Corporate Counsel Diversity Summer Internship Program. Last year, she was invited to attend the inaugural Diversity Student ADR Summit in New York, and she was recently awarded the Sandra P. Zem Labor Law Prize. She currently works at a management side law firm. Patrick Foote. Patrick graduated from the University of Central Florida with a degree in political science. Before attending law school, he was a community organizer and labor journalist. At Chicago Kent, he is president of the Labor and Employment Law Society and an editor of the Illinois Public Employee Relations Report. He is one of two law students in the country to ever have received three Peggy Browning Fund fellowships. He is a recipient of the Seoul 2020-2021 AFL-CIO Legal Fellowship in Washington, D.C and Christina Alma McNeely. Christina graduated from Butler University with a degree in criminology. At Chicago Kent, she's on the executive boards for the Student Bar Association, the Midwest region of the National Black Law Students Association, and the Hispanic Latino Law Students Association. 
She was a judicial extern for the Honorable Ruben Castillo, Chief Judge of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Illinois. In her first year, she received the Barnes and Thornburg LLP Diversity Scholarship. This fall, she begins her career at Barnes and Thornburg LLP as a first year associate. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to our panelists. I'm gonna have them go ahead and turn on their webcams and microphones. And to begin, I'd like to have our panelists um, tell us a bit more about the field of labor and employment law and the types of issues that it encompasses. And I'd like to start with the students. So maybe you could start by talking about what attracted you to labor and employment law. I can start. Um, so can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. So I was attracted to labor and employment law because it affects each and every one of us, whether we know it or not. We've all worked at some point in our life, and if not, we will work. And so I think it's important for every employee to know his or her rights in something that they do every each and every day. And on the other side, I also think it's important for employers to kind of know what they can and cannot do um, with their employees and also the types of liabilities that they might face um, with the actions and behaviors that their agents might partake in. And, you know, furthermore, work affects our livelihoods in such an immense way. Um, just one incident, one day at work can change someone's livelihood, one termination, one threat made, or even just lack of taking proper precautions at work on the employer side. And I think it's important for all of us to kind of know what it is that we might be facing at work and what our rights are. So that's what attracted me uh, to the practice area. Yeah, yeah, I'll just echo what Amy said totally. Um, for me, uh, growing up, I had a grandfather who was a, a teamster in Detroit. And, uh, you know, when he moved down to Florida, where I'm from, where I was born, where I went to undergrad, when he moved down to Florida, he realized that, you know, Florida was a right to work state in which, you know, all the benefits that he was accustomed to, all the say, all the uh, ability to speak out and speak their mind on the job that was afforded to him by Teamster membership in Florida. It was a you know it was a totally different bag because the union movement just wasn't uh, wasn't as powerful. So he he always said you know like when I moved to Florida, I realized that if the boss's cousin can do the job for five cents less an hour than you can, you were out and he was in. You know so for me it was all about. It was ingrained in me at an early age that workplace justice is a real thing and uh, workers should know their rights on the job, like Amy said, and um, uh, yeah. Um, and similar to Amy and Patrick, um, I graduated from Butler with a criminology degree and the criminology courses kind of aligned with sociology classes at Butler. Um, so I took a lot of sociology classes and I just kind of liked seeing how people interacted with one another. And when I got to law school, I realized that a lot of the labor employment classes and coursework and just the field in general had to do with social interactions in a sense and, and communications with people. And after my first year at Barnes, and my first summer at Barnes and Thornburg, I took a lot of um, projects on from the labor and employment practice group. And those projects to me, were so unlike all of the other projects I was doing for like the litigation practice or um, the corporate practice group. I saw the partners working on employee uh, handbooks and manuals and doing webinars that they would use to instruct their clients on uh, different procedures or policies and things that they had to incorporate. So I, I always thought and I always say that I think the labor and employment law practice specifically gives kind of like a human side to the law that you don't always really get to see in the other practice areas. So that's what attracted me. I can kind of cut across what Christina, Amy, and Patrick said. And for me, the attraction of labor and employment law is it is an area of the law that deals with one of the two most important aspects of most people's lives. 
right? Most people, when you ask them what's most important about your life, it's their families and their jobs. Um, and, and so labor and employment law goes right to the heart of that, to, to people's jobs, both their self-identity and, of course, you know, how they make their living, how they, how they, how they exist. Um, and it's a very dynamic area, and we see that right now during the pandemic uh, as, as we're dealing with issues of employer obligations to provide safe workplaces to their employees. Uh, we see instances of employees engaging in concerted refusals to work because they don't feel safe. We see brand new legislation expanding to, on a temporary basis, family and medical leave rights of employees, turning what used to be unpaid leave into partially paid leave uh, and the like. Um, it's, it's always evolving. You never get bored. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'll say my initial interest in labor and employment law, um, I, you know, I, I went to law school in 2000 with the idea of becoming a labor lawyer, and my main interest was to uh, try to bring justice to some people and make a living uh, doing that, and um, because labor unions have lawyers and hire lawyers, I thought that would be a good place to do that sort of thing. And I guess I'll wrap up on that. I um, So I actually didn't start out as a labor and employment lawyer, and I was doing a lot of work in insurance defense. And one of the areas of insurance defense that I worked in um, was uh, representing companies that issued employment practices liability policies to um, employers. And in, in managing the insurance issues, I had to become intimately uh, familiar with the underlying labor and employment issues to determine whether or not there was coverage under the policy. Um, I really enjoyed learning about those issues and I really um, you know, was able to identify with the challenges that people have in the workplace and really developed an interest and started to do more direct labor and employment work. But what was really exciting about it was once I decided to leave the large law firm practice, um, I went in on the business side, which is something that I think, um, you know, you can do with a labor and employment law background and go into so many different areas of business. Um, and so I went into human resources, specifically uh, labor and employee relations. And in that role, I was able to be very proactive. And that's what I loved about being on what we call management side, uh, doing management side work, in that I was inside of an organization um, really responsible for trying to ensure that our policies around our workers were fair, people were paid appropriately according to the law, people were uh, receiving the benefits they were entitled to, and just really making sure that if they had complaints or issues or things that weren't going well, that we could address those without escalating to litigation lawsuits. Um, and then also um, being proactive in, in training, training managers on how to understand the laws, how to apply the laws, how to ensure that they were treating their employees fairly. Because that's not something that we are you know, it's innate. I mean, we, we, we operate from our gut feelings often, but it may not be in alignment with the law. And so really helping managers to understand those things and really create a culture in a workplace where organizations can be profitable and you can be a part of that organization's um, profits and their uh, ability to move forward. Great. So now I'd like to talk a bit about the um, history of the programs. Professor Mallon, could you tell us more about how the program was developed and then talk about how it's structured today? Sure. So we, when we began the program uh, in 1996, um, we had a tremendous amount of input from members of the Labor and Employment Bar in the Chicago area. We went to them and said, this is the program we're thinking about designing, but we're really designing it for you. Tell us, do we have it right? Are we giving our students the necessary tools that you're looking for when they come out of the program and work for you? So with that, we were able to design the program. And then we, um, and then once we rolled it out, we went back to 
those those attorneys and said, this is what we're doing and invited them to be part of our Institute for Law in the Workplace and most accepted the the invitation. The um so the the um pedagogy behind the program is you take four four core courses, uh labor law, which deals with the relationship between collective worker action, union and otherwise, and employers. Employment relationships, which is a broad survey course of the individual employee-employer relationship. Employment discrimination, which deals with the laws governing equal opportunity employment. And all Chicago Kent students have an upper level legal writing requirement, legal writing four, and our students take it in the labor and employment specialty. Um, you also have an a, a elect, a take an elective such as workers' compensation or employee benefits. Um, and then the, the point is you take what you learned in the classroom and in your senior year, you apply it uh, in a practicum setting. And there are three options for the practicum. Um, you can serve uh, in our employment law clinic. We have an in-house clinic headed by Professor Richard Gonzalez. Uh, we also have a classroom class called employment litigation where you simulate a discrimination claim from initial client contact to uh, either bringing or responding to a motion for summary judgment, or you can serve a um, labor or employment law externship. Uh, and Dean Ross Jackson runs the externship program, so I'm going to defer to her to talk a little about, bit about it. Then maybe we can ask our three students about what they did for their practicum and what they got out of it. Sure, Marty. Um, yes, the externship program. So we have at Chicago Ken a general externship program, but then we have a specific one um, for labor and employment law certificate students where we have um, a an abundance of organizations uh, who have signed on to sponsor our students and to give them an experience uh, working at their organization and applying the skills that they're learning um, in law school. And so that's a four credit hour uh, class where you did three credit hours pass fail for your field experience where you actually go and experience uh, an organization, and then one hour of a classroom component primarily dedicated to reflecting on the, that experience and, and areas of professionalism. And I'm happy to report that we have more sponsors who are willing to uh, s support our students than, than um, students who are taking the, that opportunity because they have different options. So it's definitely a good problem to have. We have labor unions, we have management side firms, plaintiff side firms, we have union firms, we have corporations, um, we have government agencies like the EEOC, uh, the Department of Labor, uh, and so there are so many options that you can actually get out and get that field experience. We also offer a, a small scholarship for people who choose to take the externship program. It's, it's uh, given out on a need basis, but we understand that students might have to forego working during that period of time. And so we wanna make sure that there's some incentive there um, to help you as you pursue this course. And we've gotten great feedback from students who have participated. So I'd like to start with Patrick, if, he, if he'd like to share uh, his externship experience and then the other students can share their practicum experience. Yeah, thank you. Um, my externship experience was with the National Treasury Employees Union. They uh, represent federal sector uh, employees. Um, I was also the recipient of the scholarship that Dean Ross Jackson just talked about, and it was a big help. Um, yeah, no, it, you know, in my experience, I've only ever lit, worked uh, for labor unions. Uh, so I don't, can't really speak to the experience at a law firm, but in my experience working in-house at labor unions, they really, they really do throw you into the deep end because a lot of times they're running kind of on a skeleton staff. Um, so I really did feel like I was the seventh attorney in the office and uh, I worked on um, EEO, a discrimination case in front of the EEOC. 
I also uh, worked on notice and comment uh, regulations uh, being implemented by the federal government. Um, it was all around just a great experience. Uh, you know, I feel like all of the people in the office can provide references for me. They're, you know, I just asked my former boss to to uh, be a reference for the bar. He was happy to do it. Um, so yeah, it was a it was an excellent experience. Chicago Kent opened that door, and uh, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity. So Amy, you were in the clinic, weren't you? I was, yeah. So I can talk um, a bit about that. So I am actually in my second semester doing the in-house employment clinic with Professor Rich Gonzalez, and it's. I decided to pursue that opportunity because I am planning on practicing management side uh, LNE work right out of grad school, uh, right out of law school. But I figured it would be a good opportunity to kind of see the plaintiff side perspective from that. So the in-house clinic is run by two attorneys, and then the rest of us are ten students. So what? The coolest thing about that opportunity is that we get to work with real live clients, real live people that come to us and tell us on over the phone consultations, here's what's going on. I just got terminated for this reason or another. And we as the students get to hear that and based off, you know, our knowledge and what we've talked about with the two attorneys say, you know, I don't think we can, you know, pursue your case or yeah, let me talk to um our attorneys and see what we can do. So we get to work um, with clients from the very beginning, from consultations all the way to the end. Um, so we draft motions, we go through discovery, um, we sit with clients in depositions, and that's really cool because it makes me, it made me very comfortable working with a client. I was very nervous at first, but now it just kind of comes to me, you know, how to talk to clients, how to talk to the attorneys. Um, and kind of go back and forth with that and one cool experience that stood out to me last semester was that i got to work with a particular client from discovery review all the way until his settlement conference with the magistrate judge and in discovery review i essentially kind of went through employer that particular employer's disciplinary reports and did a comparative analysis with why our client was had been terminated and see if the employer had other employees who had behaved in, in a similar way but were for some reason not terminated. And so when the settlement conference came around, I was able to sit in with the attorneys, with the client, with opposing counsel and the judge and kind of listen in on everything. And because I had worked so extensively on that case, um, when the magistrate judge was out of the room talking to opposing counsel, our attorneys kind of deferred to me a lot and said, you know, what are you thinking? And I said, well, you know, opposing counsel is focusing on this particular fact, but based off everything I read, based on everything I laid out, you know, that's not a valid reason to focus on, you know, this fact. And so that was something that was cool because the attorneys really got to defer to me and kind of point certain things out that I pointed out to them. And I do believe that, you know, those particular small particular facts that I had focused on kind of made opposing counsel a little bit more flexible in their um, in their bracket for, you know, what they were willing to settle for. And then also just working with that client for so long, I could tell by the time settlement conference came around, he was very comfortable speaking to me. Uh, English was not his first language. And so because I spoke Spanish like he did, you know, when the judge was out of the room, I got to kind of talk to him and see, you know, how are you feeling? What's going on? And he, I could very much tell was at ease just kind of talking to me and knowing that he could trust me because I had worked with him for so long. And I think that really made him feel better and made the ultimate outcome um, just a lot better for everyone. And so, you know, to kind of wrap, wrap up, I just think that the practicum of the, uh, I think that the plaintiff's clinic is really great because you get to work with real life clients from the very beginning all the way to the very end, whether it's settlement conference uh, or whether it's, you know, even going to trial. So I think that was a really cool opportunity for me. And um, just to kind of go along with that, I took employment litigation um, for my practicum, which was a really great and interesting experience. I wanted to take that course because I had already had a great experience at, uh, in Chicago Kent simulation 
based classes. Uh, Professor Mallon had actually taught something called alternative uh, dispute resolution, so ADR in the work workplace, um, and that was a simulation based course and I really enjoyed it during uh, my winter break. So I heard great things about employment litigation, great things about Professor Gonzalez who oversees that program, um, and it was really interesting. You know, half the class was on the plaintiff side, half the class was on defense. Um, you had either two or three, you either had one or two other partners. Um, I had one other partner and we were on the plaintiff side. And as Professor Mallon brought up earlier, it was a discrimination related matter, um, but it was so much more than that. It was not just like sex-based discrimination, it was sexual orientation-based discrimination, harassment. It had a list of claims that you kind of had to bring forth as the plaintiff side attorney. And you started off with, um, your initial consultation with the client and it was really great because Professor Gonzalez actually brings in actors so <laughs> the school has actors that come in and play the client or um, people on the defense so the the manager and um, everything like that and we all we said that our you know our actors were a little bit easier on the defense than the defense side was to ours but it was an overall great experience because we started off with the consultation we were drafting motions um, we did interrogatories and we ended up doing a motion for summary judgment which was great and i remember going actually to uh, some type of it was like a party that my firm was hosting because uh, it was like uh, the anniversary of how long we had been in the chicago office and i was telling them that i was in the class and they instantly were like, oh my God, that's so amazing that you're able to do that, that you're able to you know, start off with like a consultation and do everything in between that you, you need to essentially do when you have a case before you um, up until you're going to trial. So I thought that that was a really great experience. Like I said, the simulation-based courses at Chicago Kent are really fun and interesting, um, and they're also challenging. So that was my overall experience, and it, it was great. Great. Now I'd like to um, maybe talk a little bit more about some of the other opportunities available to students in the program and maybe we could start out by talking a bit more about the Institute for Law in the Workplace and its relationship to the certificate program as well as some of the other opportunities students can take advantage of. Sure, so the program's housed within our Institute for Law in the Workplace which we uh, characterize as an intellectual home for the labor and employment law community in Chicago and nationwide. Um, there are approximately 25 law firms, corporations, and unions that are members of our institute. Uh, they, um, they range in size from Potter Bolanos, which is a three-lawyer plaintiff and union law firm, to Exelon Corporation, which is a giant uh, in the public utility uh, industry. The, um, the, the uh, Institute has sponsors a number of conferences and lecture programs, and uh, we encourage our students to attend those. They can attend those for free. Uh, it's, it, it enriches their, um, their curriculum, and it also gives them great networking opportunities. Uh, the Institute also has two publications. Uh, a scholarly journal called Employee Rights and Employment Policy Journal, and a quarterly publication called the Illinois Public Employee Relations Report. Uh, and our students have the opportunity to serve as student editors on those, on those publications. As you heard, Patrick is a student editor of the Public Employee Relations Report. Amy and Christina are student editors of Employee Rights and Employment Policy Journal, it gives them um, an opportunity, they learn a good deal from it, and it's also a really great uh, resume uh, credential. Um, there are other opportunities um, that come to us because of our visibility in the area and because of our reputation in the field. So, for example, um, several years ago when the EEOC um, was hosting, putting on a series of programs celebrating its 50th anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, we partnered with them for their Chicago program. And it was an absolutely amazing program on the pioneering role of flight attendants in the fight against sex discrimination in the workplace. And it's still available on the law school's YouTube channel. Uh, I, I, I 
commend it to you. We had several of the flight attendants who were plaintiffs in the class action lawsuits challenging things like the no marriage rule for flight attendants that airlines have. I don't know what the feedback we're getting is. Um, we also, you heard about uh, our, our students are very involved with the Peggy Browning Fund. The uh, the Peggy Browning Fund funds fellowships for students uh, during their summers with unions, union law firms, National Labor Relations Board, public interest groups. Uh, they also uh, run a national law students workers' rights conference, and we, we fund students to attend that. Um, Patrick, do you want to talk about your Peggy Browning Fund experience? Christine, I think you went to the conference. Is that right? Yes, I did. Sure. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the Peggy Browning Fund experience, and then I'll send it over to you, Christina, to talk a little bit about the uh, the conference. Uh, so yeah, like Professor Mellon said, the Peggy Browning Fund is an organization that hooks students who are interested up uh, who are interested in labor law up with labor unions and labor side law firms and public interest groups. And um, I'm lucky enough to have received three. Uh, my first. Peggy Browning Fellowship was with the National Federation of Federal Employees, which is a federal sector employee union uh, based in what the fellowship was based in Washington, D.C., um, which was excellent. It was like that the same week that I arrived at the National Federation of Federal Employees, the president signed three executive orders greatly restricting federal sector uh, worker rights. and um, so all the federal unions in town got together and sued the president. And I was able to do research for that. I was able to, you know, draft, uh, you know, set whole sections of the complaint. And since the judge heard it on an expedited basis, I was able to see everything from the complaint uh, response all the way up to oral argument at the end of my 10 weeks uh, at the fellowship. So it was excellent. They just throw you in the deep end, like I said. Uh, my second one, uh, luckily here in Chicago, uh, we have available to us the only school year long Peggy Browning Fund Fellowship. That's with the national, um, it's with the Chicago News Guild. Um, so I, for my second, my 2L year, I worked part time at the Chicago News Guild. And to this day, I'm doing, I, I do, um, you know, contract work for the Chicago News Guild, working on, you know, drafting, uh, position statements for the National Labor Relations Board and things like that. So that's been a great opportunity. And then my uh, summer between 2L year and 3L year, I uh, got a position with the Communication Workers, Communications Workers of America in Washington, DC. Uh, there, they, my first week, they asked me to write a, uh, a supplemental brief on a uh, fairly new, uh, that had to do with a fairly new, applying a fairly new test just created by the National Labor Relations Board. And so, you know, I, I wrote that in about three or four weeks and it won, you know, the, and I was so, my first legal victory, yay. And it was, you know, another great experience. Uh, you know, I came to law school wanting to do uh, labor law. I came to law school wanting to do a Peggy Browning Fellowship and everyone at Chicago Kent was super supportive of me uh, doing that, and we're, we're happy to help me in any way that they can, uh, that, they, that they could, and they'll be happy to help you too. Uh, Christina, if you want to talk about the conference. Yeah, so I, uh, along with Patrick, were just two of the five students that were actually able to go to the Peggy Brown, Browning Conference in Maryland this year. So Patrick was one of the recipients as well as uh, a two L named Tyler. Uh, she was a recipient and then myself along with two other three L's uh, went to the conference to attend the different workshops and everything like that. It was an overall great experience. Um, from the moment we got there, Patrick was the star. Uh, everyone knew Patrick. <laughs> um, but I just want to tell you that um, the Peggy Browning Fund and the Peggy Browning Conference and the fellows um, do kind of gain a relationship uh, with each other through their experience. Um, I was able to attend an immigrants rights workshop, a sports and labor law workshop, and I was actually in the process of taking Pro Professor Mallon's labor law class, so it helped that I took a labor law workshop while I was there. 
Um, the conference was great because you got to meet so many different students um, from all over the nation. Uh, we had really great conversations. Uh, I got to learn a little bit more about like plaintiff side versus like what management side is. Um, more just about labor law in general because the work that I had been doing at Barnes and Thornburg was more of like labor and employment law. So it wasn't really labor law specific. Um, and then it just helped my overall kind of knowledge in terms of my labor law course with Professor Mallon. Um, they had keynote speakers. They Outside of the workshops, you were just able to kind of mingle and talk to the other students, see what they're doing, see what they've been doing over the summer, see what kind of their goals are, and overall kind of build your network, uh, especially in this specific field. So I had a really great experience. Um, I know it was really great to have Patrick's help just because he was a fellow. He was able to kind of tell us a little bit more about uh, the Peggy Browning Fund, the Peggy Browning Fellowship, and um, everything that it just entailed, uh, especially the conference. So it was great. I think we had like an overall really fun experience, uh, the Chicago Kent group, and we got to kind of bond and talk a little bit more. And it was it was a really fun, fun time. And last year, the American Arbitration Association um, sponsored an, an ADR Student Diversity Summit. and um, the American Arbitration Association offered, I think it was a total of 24 scholarships all across the country uh, to fund students to attend this, this program at their headquarters in New York City. And I'm proud to say two of our students got those scholarships. So two out of 24 nationwide went to our students and Amy was one of them. Amy, do you wanna chat about that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I would love to. So uh, like Professor Mallon said, um, this past November, I, along with Enrique, who is a 2L at Kent, got the opportunity to go to Manhattan and participate in the first ever diversity student ADR summit. Um, and I would not have first off known about that opportunity were it not for being a part of the ILW program here at Kent. Um, I received an email in, I believe, early fall from Professor Mallon letting us know about this and just reading the small uh, information about it. I thought this would be a great opportunity for me because I personally have always enjoyed working in smaller settings with people and just kind of focusing on their personal needs and interests. Um, I never really saw myself as a litigator. And so I said, okay, this sounds like something that I would really enjoy. Um, I didn't, and any, you know, I didn't think, okay, well maybe if I don't make it, it's fine. At least I get, you know, to learn a little bit about it through the mediation clinic that I had done the semester before. But I said, why not just go ahead and apply? So I submitted my application. Uh, it was just a resume, um, a letter of recommendation, and two essays. The first was on mediation and why it interested me, and the second was on the future of ADR. So I submitted my application, and I was super excited when I found out that I was invited. I got the scholarship, so covered my travel expenses. Um, so I went there, and like Professor Mallon said, there were only 24 of us uh, nationwide. So I, I got to meet a lot of um, students from different law schools all throughout the country. Um, I got to meet Enrique, who I didn't know beforehand, uh, and he and I still keep in touch today. Um, and essentially, it was two days of focusing on focusing on mediation and ADR uh, in, the in the workplace was a lot of actually what the summit focused on, um, but it was overall ADR and mediation. Um, and so we focused on uh, first off mediation skills, um, focusing on the needs and interests of parties um, in smaller settings. And then the other cool thing about that opportunity was that I got to learn a lot about what it is to be an arbitrator. Um, I never, like I said, thought I would like to litigate. I always said I wanna do strictly transactional work. I don't wanna do any of that. But then just by talking to some of the panelists and learning about their experiences, I got to see that maybe litigation might not be so bad, um, especially if you wanna be a labor and employment arbitrator, a lot of that experience you might get litigating. And so I said, okay, maybe this isn't necessarily something that is not so much for me. Uh, maybe I, you know, it could be something that I could enjoy, and furthermore, it could be something that could kind of strengthen my skills and my knowledge set in LNE, so that then if I do one day want to become an arbitrator, I'll have that better experience um, and that better mindset. 
And so now this semester, I'm actually in trial ad, which I enjoy a lot. I never in a million years thought I would be taking that course. I thought my first semester, I'm like, yeah, that's never going to be for me. And now I'm in it with Patrick, actually. And it's a smaller group. And we have our midterm trial this later this week, which I'm very excited about. And so just kind of putting myself out there and um, realizing that some things that I had put on the back burner um, might not necessarily be so scary and might actually then kind of make you a more a, a better rounded you know person to kind of focus on whatever it is that you want to do so that was a really cool opportunity then I'll defer to could talk oh, sorry go ahead I was going to defer to Dean Ross Jackson to talk about the scholarships <laughs> I'll, I'll say something really quickly. I know we're running short on time and we want to at least leave some time for questions for the students. But one of the main things, one of the most significant things that our members do, Marty talked about the members of our Institute for Law in the Workplace coming from firms and, and unions and corporations, et cetera, um, is that they donate money that uh, can be used for, that is designated for scholarships to our labor and employment law certificate students. And so we awarded this past year $159,000 to our certificate students in scholarship. And this scholarship was on top of, as I talked about earlier, if they were taking an externship and they got the externship scholarship, or if they're getting some other form of scholarship from Chicago Kent. Um, and then also we have some alums who agree to adopt students and they donate scholarships to the student they adopt and also mentorship. Great, and now maybe we could talk a little bit about where students go after graduation and what the employment opportunities are coming out of the program. So our graduates are everywhere. Uh, we're very proud of this. They're partners and associates in leading management law firms, they include the managing shareholder of Ogletree Deacons, which is one of the leading nationwide uh, management law, labor and employment law firms. Uh, the hiring partner of Littler Mendelssohn's Chicago office, which is another one of the leading uh, nationwide management labor and employment law firms. They're partners and associates at union, leading union firms in Chicago, leading plaintiffs employment firms. Uh, one is the in-house lawyer for Raise the Floor, one of the most prominent worker centers in the United States. One's the uh, general counsel for Teamsters Local 743, and another is the general counsel for SEIU Local 73. Um, and one just retired as general counsel of Actors Equity. Um, the chief in-house employment counsel for Groupon is one of our graduates, as is the managing director for labor relations and legal strategy for United Airlines. Um, one of our graduates um, had been the general counsel of Teamsters Local 705 and for the past two years has been a commissioner with the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service and mediated the recent uh, last fall Chicago Public Schools Chicago Teachers Union strike. Um, they're not just in Chicago, they're all over the country in DC, in Florida, in in Alaska, one of the senior lawyers, the Alaska Public Employment Relations Commission is one of our graduates, as is one of the senior lawyers at the state of Washington's Public Employment Relations Commission. Um, they're everywhere. I think the, the value of our curriculum, uh, that it is really geared to the needs of the profession is recognized nationally. Uh, and you don't just have to take our word for it. We're still giddy over the fact that, that the winter 2019 issue of Pre-Law Magazine rated our program the number one employment law program in the country. Great. Before we open things up for questions, maybe um, the students could just share a little bit about, uh, a little more about your experience in the program and, and, and how, do you feel like the program has helped prepare you to move into your uh, labor and employment law career? career. I think so. Um, I think. I think like everyone has mentioned, um, there are so many networking opportunities for us students to attend throughout the year. And I have gone to as many as I can. Um, a lot of times they're uh, just in the evenings on weekdays. So I go after classes or after dinner and you would be surprised um, how it, 
big, but also in a sense small, the Chicago labor and employment community is. And so every time without a miss that I have gone to some sort of networking event, I either meet someone or I see someone that I already know, or just by talking to people, I, we happen to have some sort of mutual connection in common. And that's really been a great opportunity because you get to really brand yourself as someone in the community, as a young lawyer or as a law student, as someone that has a huge interest in the subject area and is willing to kind of put themselves out there and learn new perspectives and meet new people. So I think getting to know about these different opportunities for us as law students or as young attorneys to kind of put ourselves out there um, has been great just to kind of prepare us and ease in um, to actually practicing. Yeah, and I'll, you know, of course, everything Amy said is absolutely correct. And from a more specific, uh, specific to labor law um, uh, perspective, uh, Chicago, can, you know, the labor law world is very small, you know, as unions, unfortunately, have declined over the years. Uh, that, that world of union side, or even just union uh, labor attorneys has shrunk. and but kind of a kind of a good thing about that is everywhere I go, people know Chicago Kent. You know, people know Professor Mallon. I I know people who I know several people who say that oh Professor Mallon, he was the linchpin that got me the interview that got me my first job. You know, and all of our professors, if you if you show up, if you are competent and you work hard, all of them will go out on a limb for you and it's just been an incredibly supportive environment. Yeah, and just kind of summing up, I guess, what Amy and Patrick said, I, I've had a really great experience with just the, the program and the classes. I love my professors. You know, I've had Professor Mallon, I've had Professor Rosado. I think the coursework, you know, both of them make it very interesting, make it, you know, um, something that you look forward to go into class to kind of discuss. Um, from my experience with my law firm, you know, it's, it's great to hear feedback that they think it's amazing that I, you know, participated in an arbitration when I was in a simulation course with Professor Mallon and that I know how everything like that operates, how an arbitration works, how mediation works. Um, just the fact that, you know, I know how depositions work because of having my employment litigation course and kind of just having this idea of, of what I need to do in terms of, uh, of different matters. I think that that's great. But I think just kind of like what Patrick was saying, it's a very supportive group. Um, the professors are very supportive. The students, because there's, there's a lot of us, but there's not too many of us. And we are very supportive of one another and everything that we're doing, you know, an accomplishment uh, that anyone gets is kind of an accomplishment for the program as a whole. Um, so I think that overall, it's been a really great experience and, and also like, Patrick was saying that you say that you had Professor Mallon for a class or that Professor Mallon is, you know, um, at Chicago Kent, they know where he's at, but you say that, okay, well, I, I took a course with Professor Mallon and it's instantly like, oh, wow, you know, you know, Marty Mallon, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's great just to kind of have that, that experience and be able to say that, yeah, well, I learned from Professor Mallon. Yeah, I learned from Dean Ross Jackson. Yeah, I learned from Professor Rosado. So now we'd like to open things up for your questions. We do have some time to take a few questions. So you can use the questions box in the webinar software and our panelists would be happy to answer your questions. We'll just wait a few minutes for those to come in. Maybe while we're waiting for the questions to come in, any other thoughts you'd like to offer? Maybe students could talk a little bit. How did you make this decision? Because you know, just a few years ago, you were in the same seat where you were, you know, trying to pick a school and decide where to go. Any thoughts on how you made that decision, and any advice for students who are in your same situation? Yeah, uh, for me, I always knew that I wanted to do labor law, union side labor law. It's the only reason I came to law school. It's the only reason I ever entertained the idea of going to law school. And um, there's just really no one, there's no school comparable in Chicago. A lot, of, a lot of law schools don't even teach labor law anymore. And, but, you know, Chicago Kent puts the fo focus on it. And, uh, you know, 
our graduates being everywhere is a, is a testament to that fact. Um, I think for me, you know, I went to Chicago Kent uh, specifically, I think after an experience I had with Dean Ross Jackson, I participated in the pre-law undergraduate scholars program at Kent, um, which was the summer before my senior year. And I took intro classes uh, that one all students would take. And Dean Ross Jackson oversees and heads that entire program. Um, so she gave me that introduction to Chicago Kent. I always knew I wanted to come back here. I was born here. My family's from here. Um, and she actually, outside of my experience at Barnes and Thornburg with the Labor and Employment Department, you know, I knew that Dean Ross Jackson had this experience in labor and employment uh, law. So, you know, I think a lot of why I ended up doing that was because of just her mentorship. And, you know, she knew my interests. She had similar interests in just seeing her experience um, and just the overall program as a whole. It's a really great program. I saw students that were graduating or that were 2Ls and 3Ls that were already in the certificate program that really enjoyed it. Um, and that was partially why I decided outside of, you know, my little experience in the summer at Barnes. I, you know, I actually did not, was not dead set on doing labor and employment law when I chose Kent. Um, I was still kind of exploring different subject areas. I think I worked more on the side of what do I not want to do? which like I said at first I thought I definitely don't want to do litigation but now you know still kind of putting it on the table but I think that what stood out to me about the labor and employment program was something that Christina had touched on earlier it's such a tight-knit group of students and professors and kind of how she said you know one student success is all of our successes and I kind of heard you know this student you know was awarded this prize or this student works here um, and I you know just talking to other lawyers in the Chicago community um, just meeting a few labor and employment attorneys and kind of mentioning I went to Kent I went to Kent I'm like okay well you're doing you're having you have a successful career and you went to Kent so maybe that's something for me to explore as well um, and just all like you know, all both students have said, Patrick and Christina, um, all the professors, you know, kind of make it very obvious that they're there to help, they're there to teach, they're there to provide resources, um, give any mentor mentoring that they can. And that's kind of definitely, every time I have a question, I kind of ask Professor Mallon, just because I've known him for a while now, I'm like, what's your advice on this? Like, what should I do here? And he's always good about kind of helping me weigh the options, but ultimately letting me decide, you know, what is going to be the best option for me. So I'm really appreciative of that. Hey, we do have a few questions that have come in. Um, first one is, uh, should we take a uh, labor and employment law elective course during the first year? So you have at Chicago Kent, the 1L Your Way program, which allows you in the spring semester of your first year to defer taking the legislation course and to take one of a group of electives. One of those electives is our employment relationships course. And I do encourage first year students to take it uh, because in your first semester, you take contracts and torts and the employment relationships class picks up right where contracts and torts left off and deals with the law of contract and law of tort as applied in the workplace and then moves on to the whole regulatory system, which you can think of as a response, a legislative response to some of the failures of the common law contracts and torts. And it's a good chance, way to just kind of sample it. And you may decide, well, this really isn't for me, and then move on from there. Or you may get hooked, like uh, Christina and Amy and Patrick, and we'll, we'll have you for the next two years and do everything we can to help you succeed. Yeah, and I think it's also very, very useful um, if you're interested in, in, the, in practicing labor and employment law to have that for your first summer. Um, uh, law firms, uh, various groups that, you know, practice, uh, have a labor and employment law practice will be actually quite impressed if you have that and uh, might um, and, and look for it sometimes uh, because not everyone has that in their background. Our next question is, uh, how many students at Chicago Kent are specializing in labor and employment law? I think it varies from year to year, but it runs in the 50 to 60 range. Okay, and then the next question is, um, does 
does labor law knowledge and practice assist in the task of organizing workplaces and creating worker power, or is that largely the role of unions themselves? I'm going to defer to Professor Rosado since he used to represent unions. <laughs> uh, so certainly, um, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the the area of labor and employment well recognizes labor unions as the main um, locus of worker power, right? And actually, it's all structured around the the idea that we should facilitate um, the organization of unions so that workers can get some more leverage at the workplace, because as ind individuals in the workplace, they don't have that kind of leverage. So. Labor law is uh, is about sort of generating uh, conditions under which workers can 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 organize, right? Now there's a question whether the law that we have right now is really helping workers do that, um, and it's something I explore in my classes and whatnot. Uh, but that is sort of generally the idea behind it, for sure. Professor Asado is being modest. He organized a uh, symposium last fall on so-called alt-labor, that is alternative organizations for workers to traditional unions. Uh, and it was an amazing symposium and for, I was glad to see a lot of our students actually attended. Uh, yeah, and I just wanna say, uh, knowing the law is, so I come from an organizing background. I worked briefly at United you know, Food and Commercial Workers. I also worked at Central Florida Jobs with Justice, which is a nonprofit uh, built of uh, a coalition of unions and community groups focused on direct action. And uh, knowing the law is incredibly helpful. I mean, we at Jobs with Justice would refer to outside attorneys all the time. You know, we would uh, we would often say that uh, you know we, we're going to go ahead and get the no from the attorneys. So we would say something like. Oh, we're thinking about doing a, a direct action this day. We're going to go into Walmart. We're going to, you know, make a ruckus. We're going to hand them a petition that they're, you know, that their uh, people signed asking for, you know, better working conditions, whatever the issue is. And the attorneys will be like, oh, well, you know, that's probably not a good idea because they, the attorneys would tell us what, what could happen to us. And we would, you know, take that for what it's worth and do what we were going to do anyway. And uh, I always like the... Uh, <laughs> I always like the idea of, uh, you know, as an attorney, you can approach things in a very siloed way, like, oh, I'm going to focus on the legal issues and then everything in the strategic issues, oh, that's above my pay grade. But I think if you can merge the two, the strategic with the legal and also, you know, uh, with always with an eye on building worker power, like, I think that's entirely possible and it's worth striving for. It's what I'm striving for. So those are all the questions that have come in and we have reached the end of the time for the webinar. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for joining us for the presentation today. Um, if you do have questions that come up after the program or if you'd like to speak with any of the students or faculty, um, just reach out to the Office of Admissions and we are happy to put you in touch with anyone that you'd like to speak with. And again, thank you for joining us today and we look forward to hopefully seeing you at Chicago Kent this fall. Thank you everyone.